Hi folks, Arduino Master Lock Cracker. This is awesome. This is the coolest project I've ever made. Why? Because it's everything I love. It's Arduino, it's CNC machining, it's prototyping, it's servos, it's automation, and it's tying it all together with a project. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. I had this idea a few months ago. We can rotate a dial, we can control it with an Arduino, we ought to be able to brute force crack a master lock. So, ends up it's a lot harder than I thought at first, but we still got it working. So why is it difficult? Master locks have 40 numbers and three digits in the combination. That's 40 times 40 times 40, about 64,000 potential options. Ends up it's not really that many because the combinations don't have consecutive numbers. Regardless of the number though, we need to turn that wheel fast, we need to turn it accurately, and we need to know where we are because I don't wanna just crack it, I want Arduino to tell me what the correct combination is. So how do we do it? We have a clear path motor, it's attached with a coupler to a shaft, how did we fit the shaft onto the face of the clear path dial? We used plumber's putty. It let us press that onto the master lock dial and it gave us a really good fit without much backlash. We do, however, have some backlash in the overall system, whether that's in the master lock or the key slot. We also need to hold the master lock in place and not have it rotate, but I wanted it to be able to swap it out quickly because otherwise this isn't fun if you've got to tear the whole thing apart to put a new lock in. We needed a way to test each combination to see was it good, so we had to have a solenoid that lifts up and um, test the shackle, and we needed a way to test whether that solenoid actually lifted it up, and when it does lift it up, I wanted it to hold the shackle in the open position, because if it falls back down, it doesn't look as cool. So those were all some of the things that we did in Fusion 360 as we iterated through this design process, and I share this because I'm not really a good designer. In fact, if you take a look at my sketches for the first version of this, it was terrible. Even the first one that we machined was, was atrocious, but it, it, for me, that's how I have to design this. And we got it working. A shout out to the folks at Technic who make the ClearPath motors. They wrote an Arduino library. Link in the video description on, on information on this that helps not only make this really easy to use for other projects as well, but they're actually cheating. They are writing commands faster than the Arduino Digital Write can do it because they're accessing the direct registers, I believe that's the right word, on the uh, Atmel chip. That's cool. That's how we're getting to something like 4,000 RPMs and checking about nine numbers per second. Nine numbers a second, that's awesome. Let's talk about the design. So I swear, I am a terrible designer, but it's fun to iterate through. Try to forget about the limitations and realities of actual machining at, at first, and just sketch out ideas. I did some of this by hand, and I thought about having the lock presented with the motor directly in front of it, and then a perpendicular motor that could lift up on the shackle, and I just didn't like it. It was gonna be too big and bulky, and I thought, well, wait a minute here. What if we stack them on top of each other? We could have the lock held right down here, and then above it, we could have sort of a, a fishing wire with a hook that could be rotating to tug up on it, and how would you arrest the motion of the lock down here? And I know this looks pretty terrible, but this was what helped me realize, okay, this is what makes sense, kind of a hybrid of the two, which is what we ended up with. We've got the motor, we've got the lock back here held in this machined pocket. This was the mystery part from a Wednesday, past Wednesday widget. We've got the solenoid held up here that tugs up on it, and we've got this axle, with the spring and the sliding thing. We could have shortened this up. We wanted it removed, set back a little bit for video purposes so we could see the lock face. But it's also nice because again, you can slide this back and you're able to insert uh, a new lock. The idea is you could take this to a high school or a school or show and people could bring their master lock and throw it in there and hit go and it cracks the combination and tells you what it is. Pretty fun, right? Let's talk Arduino code. So the folks at Technic, link in the video description, wrote a library that makes this super easy. The downside is it takes away some of the behind the scenes stuff, but frankly here that's okay. Link here, check out some of our past ClearPath videos where you can see more about ClearPath, but basically they enable the motor and then they establish this master lock as a sort of library. You set how fast you want it to solve or move rather, and then it does this try all combinations after it's gone through and looked for the detent locations. The other example, these come with the, uh, if you go to examples, Clear path cracker once you install the library. These are the two examples. The other example, example one, uh, is a lot more simple. It allows you to actually test out. So, master cracker 
try combination, then we can actually write in our own combination and that can help you prove that the thing is working correctly. The link in the video description also has the wiring diagram to show how to hook this up. Let's take a look inside the master lock, but how do I get it open? Psst, John, use the water displacement trick. How do we solve it in about two, three minutes? The key is figuring out the last digit of the combination, which we can do because the way a master lock works is when we go to pull up on the shackle, when you're in the correct orientation, it allows this to move into that detent. So even though we've got 40 digits here, you've really only got about 12 positions. And so what we do in the beginning with that sensing routine is we move it to each position and we're able with the clear pass feedback and sensitivity to measure the width of each of these detents. And the one that actually counts, the one we care about, has a different width. And with pretty good probability, that lets us figure out the last combination, which reduces the number of permutations significantly. What's great too is the Arduino I.O. actually tells us what's going on. So it tells us how it's sensing, it tells us well, the combination that it's trying, and then most importantly, obviously, when it solves the lock, it gives us the combination. So folks, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. This is what it's all about. It's tying all this stuff together. It's the Arduino, it's the machining, it's, it's, it's failing, but failing fast, and then getting it working, and it's just, to me, the coolest thing. We have this technology, we live in this great era, we're able to make stuff like this. I hope you guys enjoyed, take care, see you next Wednesday. <laughs>